Hi all, welcome to Chopin Hub Garage. In this video, we are fitting disc brakes in RX135. So, we got a RX135 from one of our customers. And this is a budget conversion, so we don't need to spend so much money on this mod. And so, we are going for the Pulsar disc brake assembly. In this video, I will be covering every details about how to fit the disc brakes in RX135. So please make sure that you got every point so please don't skip the video please watch it continuously and let's start the video. The first thing I did was I removed the front wheels by loosening the axle nuts. The next thing I need to do is to remove the front forks for that I am loosening the bolts that hold the front forks to the upper T. Now two of the upper T bolts are removed now. So next thing I am going to do is to remove the number plate to get access to the bolts that are holding the fork to the T stamp. So now four of the bolts are removed. Now I am going to remove the mudguard. So I am loosening the mudguard bolts. There are four of them. I just need to remove two of the bolts because I can remove one of the fork assembly. So after removing the fork then I can easily remove the mudguard from the fork assembly. That's what I am doing now. So one of the fork is removed now and second one is going out. These are our Pulsar fork we got from the scrapyard. It's reconditioned and ready to go into the motorcycle. For easy fitment of the fork into the T-stem, I, I am inserting a screwdriver in between the gaps of the T-stem. So it will make necessary clearance to fit the fork assembly. And doing the same thing on the upper T's also. Okay, two of the forks are inserted. I need to level two of the forks just to make sure that the axle fits in perfectly. For that, I inserted the axle and found that two of them are not in level. So I am hitting the forks to get in level. If the forks are in level properly, then the axle must rotate freely. That's what I am checking right now. So after leveling the fork is done, I am inserting the bolts into the lower T and the upper T and tightening it. So the fork assembly is fitted properly. The next thing I need to do is to remove the throttle from the handlebar and removing the old brake lever. The old brake lever is making way for 
our new master cylinder. After fitting the master cylinder, we are going to the wheels. So it's our new wheel. It has a pulsers hub and adapter plate. We got no rims and spokes and the old tires was used because it was in good condition. After tightening the bolts of the adapter plate, I am going to install the disc plate. These are all used parts. They have some sort of wear and tear but are in decent usable condition. So we use it. The disc is fitted into the adapter plate by using 6 allen key bolts. The front holes of the Yamaha Smartguard is made into slots and the rear holes are made bigger to allow me fitting the mudguard into the pulsers fork assembly. Pulsar uses 13mm size bolt to fit the mudguard into the fork assembly whereas RX uses 10mm bolts. That's the reason why I made the rear holes of the mudguard bigger. After fitting the mudguards, I need to measure the distance between two fork legs where the axles fit. This measurement is critical to calculate the length of distance bushes we are inserting on left and right sides. The vernier showed a measurement of 12.7 cm. After taking down that measurement, I need to measure the distance between end faces of the left side and right side wheel bearing. It measures 6.6 cm. The measurement is done such that out of 12.7 cm that's the distance between two fork legs the hub comes around 6.6 .6 cm. So uh, the remaining comes around 6.1 cm and this 6.1 cm must be divided equally between left sides and right sides. So the left side and right side distance bushes must be of the uh, length 3.05 cm. Don't worry about the calculations, I will be giving it in the descriptions below. So now we know the length of distance bushes on the left side and right side. It's 3.05 cm. So I got a pulsar distance bush which was a longer bush then I cut short it using my grinder and file to make into 3.05 cm. So the left side is complete. On the right side, instead of the distance bush, we need to use the speedometer pinion. So the speedometer pinion must be of 3.05 cm long. But the pulsar speedometer pinion was a big, bit larger. So I used the grinder and my file to make it into 3.05 cm. It took much time for the grinding and filing of the speedometer pinion to make it into right size and fit into our vehicle. Be cautious while doing this because a wrong sized speedometer pinion will cause suspension troubles and will adversely affect your vehicle's handling. So that's the end of the fabrication side. So I have a 3.05 cm long distance bush and the same size 3.05 cm 
speedometer pinion. Now I am going to fit the wheels into the fork assembly. Finally, the wheels are fitted into the motorcycle. Yes, the wheels rotate freely and it's a good sign. So the wheels were in perfect center between the two forks. Now I need to fit the calipers so that I am putting a screwdriver in between the brake pads so that I can get sufficient clearance to fit the disc brakes in between. At this position you can see a distance between the caliper and the fork legs. This space is to be filled by using sufficient number of washers. Apply some brake pressure and make, the cali make sure the caliper is in the perfect position. Release the brake pressure and slide in the calipers into the bolts. Make sure that the caliper is not over tight and it is movable. Repeat the same procedure on the bottom side of the caliper also. The number of washers needed to fill the space between the caliper and the fork lug on the top and the bottom will be same. After doing this, make sure that you tighten both the bolts with sufficient torque. Now the disc brake is working properly. Please check it by rotating the wheels and applying brake pressure. After assembling the brakes, I am fitting the speedometer cable into the speedometer pinion box. Please make sure that the speedometer cable is rotating freely. So our disc brake assembly is completed at this point. The next thing I need to do is to wire the brake light switch wiring harness. This one is a simple wiring harness that is self made. It has only two wires. Both the wires has on clip on one side and male cones on the other side. One of the male cones is to be inserted into the green and yellow wire in the wiring harness and the other one into the brown wire that's from the ignition line. You don't need to change anything in the original vehicle's wiring harness. These lines are actually the original lines that are used to light the tail lamps in the wiring harness. After plugging the wire into the harness, make way for the wire to the mask. Inserted into the brake light switch that is provided in the mask. Check whether the brake light is working properly. At this point, most of my works are finished. Now I am fitting my headlight back into position. And that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you like the video please share it with your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.